Well, hello, story chasers. I am bringing you a video today that you guys have really requested when you saw in the last couple of videos, I was actually making Lily's dog food. So I make her food from scratch now and I do it in the Instant Pot. So that's what this video is gonna be about. So stay tuned and I'll show you all the ingredients and exactly how to prepare it. So this recipe is gonna be a turkey recipe, and what I usually do is I just switch out the protein. So today we're gonna to do ground turkey, and I try to get like the best stuff for her. I wanna get the no hormones, no antibiotics, the same stuff that I would get for myself because it's just better for her. So I have a pound and a half of that today. I actually used a half for a recipe for myself the other day. So I have a pound and a half of turkey, one zucchini, one carrot, one apple, one sweet potato, and some spinach. So a lot of times I will put in livers in here. So like chicken livers or beef livers. It's really good for them, but I did forgot to pick up chicken livers. So you can add that in as well. I usually try to do the same protein source. So turkey, I usually don't see turkey livers, but I see chicken livers and it's a poultry. So it's kind of the same. Or if you're doing beef, you're going to do beef livers. So you want to keep the protein source the same. And you also want to rotate your proteins. This is really important. It's something that I learned a long time ago with my dog Dylan, where you need to rotate your protein sources for your animals because they start to get allergies, just like we would if we eat the same thing over and over and over again. So you want to make sure you rotate the protein sources so that one week you're cooking turkey, another week you might be doing beef, etc. So Lily is 10 pounds. This recipe will last her about a week and a half to two weeks. So let's get started. Okay, so one of the first things we want to do is we want to brown our ground beef in the Instant Pot. And I just do that on the saute mode. So while that is actually browning in here, we are going to cut up the vegetables after that. So let's get this started on browning. So the turkey's all brown now and we have our vegetables and our fruit all cut up. And one thing that you want to be careful of when you're doing your fruits and vegetables here for your dog is depending on what size your dog is, depends on the size that you're going to actually cut up your vegetables. So Lily's tiny, she has a missing tooth and three missing teeth on the front. And so I like to cut hers up in very small sizes. Now, when you cook all of this, it's gonna kind of pulverize just a little bit. The carrots are harder and the sweet potato is harder. So that doesn't pulverize as much as like the zucchini and the apple. So I still cut everything up really small and then throw it all in the pot and she's able to eat it just like that. So if you have a bigger dog, you may not have to make as tiny little, you know, Know, cuts as you would you can see that you may not have to make as tiny cuts as I did on everything so this is a whole bowl full of vegetables I'm gonna try to cram it all into the instant pot now so one of the other things that you're gonna have to be careful of is if your dog doesn't like carrots or apples or anything that I'm putting in this recipe and you want to substitute something just be careful that it is not poisonous to dogs so I know for sure that grapes and onions are not good for them so you want to make sure that whatever you're using that they can digest it easily and it will not harm them so go online and do a little bit of research but this recipe is very easy. Literally just have your protein source and any vegetable that you want that your dog actually likes. All right, we're gonna get started now. So now we're gonna throw all of the vegetables and the fruit inside the bowl here, the Instant Pot. Doesn't really matter like in what order or anything. I just throw everything into a bowl when I'm cutting. And then that way it goes into the Instant Pot really easily. So I like to give it a good stir, mix everything up in there really well. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna put in is some spinach. 
And Lily doesn't like a ton of spinach, but it gives her some extra vitamins. And so I just put in a little bit so that she uh, gets some extra greens in her diet. That's probably about all I'm going to do. She'll sometimes spit it out. So I don't want to give her too much. All right. So the last thing is I'm going to put in about a cup of water just so that it has some liquid in the bottom. And those vegetables will also help to give it more liquid as it cooks, but it's good for them uh, to have that liquid. I also give that to them, you know, when I stir it all up, um, when it's done cooking and then I put it in Ziploc bags. So it's like a nice little gravy for them. So a cup of water inside there and you just have to kind of check it out for yourself to make sure that you've got a good amount of water down to the bottom. With the Instant Pots, you have to have water or some kind of liquid at the bottom to make sure that everything cooks properly. All right, so that's what it looks like before we start cooking it. And now, now we're gonna put the lid on it. Make sure that it's in the sealed position and we're gonna pressure cook it for eight minutes is good. So eight minutes on high pressure is going to cook all of the vegetables and everything in with the meat. So the meat's already brown. You don't have to worry about that having any kind of like contamination or anything or not being cooked properly because it's already cooked because it's been browned. Now, if you were going to do chicken instead of ground turkey, you usually wouldn't actually go in there and brown your chicken. You could just cut up a bunch of chicken breasts or chicken thighs, boneless, skinless ones, of course. And then you could cook that all in the pot at the same time. If that's what you're doing, I probably would go for 10 minutes on that just to make sure the chicken is cooked thoroughly. We're going to wait for this to cook. I'm going to clean up the dishes a little bit and then we'll see what it's like when we're done. Okay guys, it is done. I heard the beeping and now we just need to release the pressure. So you want to be very, very careful when you do this. You're just going to come over here and don't put your hand over that because that's where the steam comes out and then just release it. And you can, if you want, you can put like a little paper towel just kind of over it if you want. And then once that little button right there goes down, you'll hear like a little pop. Then you know it is ready to open the lid. All right, it's ready to open. So one thing that I like to do before I actually serve the food to Lily and get all this put into bags is I like to put a little bit of organic coconut oil in there and that helps her get in some good fats. And I just put a little bit in, but I do it after it's already cooked and I just stir it in a little bit. So here's the coconut oil and I'm just going to put that in there so that it kind of comes off of my spoon. I'm sorry, I'm getting steam. Stir everything up so that it's nice and mixed up. And as you can see, there is a lot of liquid in there for her and that helps with like a nice little gravy and also water. Lily hates to drink water out of her bowl, so I always have to put it in her food. So just like our food, we need to make sure that we take supplements on a daily basis. So I have this sea meal that I give Lily. It's from Solid Gold. I just bought it on Amazon and I'll provide a link in the description and the pinned comment. But I give this to her on a daily basis. Now you can put this inside the entire pot of food. I don't recommend it though. I like to just sprinkle it over her food um, every time I feed her because I just feel like I can kind of control the amount and you don't really need that much. Um, she just gets like a quarter of a teaspoon with each bowl and I feed her twice a day. So this actually helps with support skin and coat and digestive and immune system. It has seaweed, flaxseed, and digestive enzymes and lots of good minerals for them. So I really like it. You can go check it out and see if it's something that maybe your dog needs. Um, it has all kinds of ingredients and stuff on the back of it that tells you exactly what is in that entire container. And she seems to respond really well with it. She's got a great coat and she's like 12 years old and everybody thinks that she's much younger. She's got tons of energy. So anyways, I also put that on her food and make sure that it's in every bowl. Okay, let's serve some up for her. And before I do, I'm going to put it in a bowl and I'm going to let it cool off because it's very, very hot right now. And then we'll give it to Lily and see how she likes it. Lily, you ready for your food? You ready? Oh, yum, 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 yum. Okay. Oh. Good girl. Okay guys, so it looks like we have a winner and Lily loves her food. She's actually, well, let's see. She's licking her bowl clean. But good Lily, what do you think? <laughs> oh, you left two little morsels. Go get them, go get them. She got them. 
She loves this food that I make for her so much more than any food that I've ever made and I hope that you make this recipe and that your dogs love them too. Go ahead and leave me a comment below if you make the recipe and your dogs love it or don't love it. Also leave me a comment if you make your own dog food and maybe give us all a recipe or other things that you put in your dog's food like other fruits and vegetables, things like that. So the last thing that we need to do is we need to bag up the food. I put them in Ziploc bags and I store some of them in the freezer and then some of it just of course in the regular refrigerator so that I can just pull out the bags as I need to from the freezer and use that for her food throughout the week. All right guys, that is it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Go ahead and like that video. Subscribe if you haven't already. It helps me grow and helps more people see my videos. I'll see you in the next video guys. Have a great week, bye.